All right, guys. Um, figure it's time to show you the Miller uh, Motorsports chassis. Um, you know the the paint job and everything didn't. It, it looks all right, but I'm I'm gonna try to change it to the the new version where it's a little bit more golden and then make the tube chassis uh, black. So this works for now because it kind of resembles it, you know. The older version um, pretty much uh, this is the version that has the panels and top all incorporated into the chassis and then the only thing that's removable is the the hood uh, it's only got four attachment bolts so that you can put it on and take it off relatively quickly uh, you could also obviously put magnets if you know if you want to go that way but uh, it has the holes already pre-drilled in there so that you could attach it to the the chassis. Um, from the pictures that I've shown before, you know, you could tell that you could put the, the original motor facing forward, which brings the weight forward some. And then the battery goes in the front. For this one, I went ahead and I put the 180 motor in there. Um, this is one of the motor plates that... Uh, I printed myself with the resin so that's why you could tell that it's a little bit tilted back um, I didn't cure it for, <laughs> so it's kind of soft still so it's a little bit bent down but it still works um, I just got to put it outside in the sun so it could cure and harden up so um, that's not what you get when you order the the motor plates from Shapeways they actually send you one that's really nice and actually stiff <laughs> not like that but um Pretty much if you wanted to mount the 130 or a 180 motor, it would be facing backwards uh, because I went ahead and put the battery tray in the front because um, you could put more weight that way in the front. Um, as with uh, some of the other uh, designs that I made, uh, because I have the deadbolt version, uh, you guys know that the rear links are a lot longer than what the front ones are and um, that just doesn't really work for the boogies and and this guy uh, if I were to use it originally the way it is because it will set this mounting point way up here and that just throws off the whole look of the chassis so I went ahead and did the same thing with this one and I reversed the whole thing so you have the longer links in the front and the short ones in the back and it gives you pretty much you know the look of what the actual chassis is supposed to look like you know the original one uh, obviously if you purchase this um, chassis you can make your own links you know your own length I'm only doing this because uh, when I show these chassis I want people to know that you could just transplant everything from the stock one into the chassis and it works um, I'm also trying to show two different variations of what the shocks are uh, the rear I went ahead and put the, the stock length for the rear shock so you can see it's the furthest uh, mounting point in the back and it's got some extra ones so if you have extended shocks or longer shocks you can mount it a little bit forward and then I did the extended shocks as you can see that's fully compressed uh, because they have been extended in length and that's what I use for the, the buggies uh, the rock bouncers and I went ahead and mounted that in the rear mounting points so if you have the stock it will go somewhere here along the front and you know if you were to extend the length uh, the links even more so if you wanted to make this to be you know kind of like the F um, formula off-road you will bring these axle a little bit further out and this one back so you have a longer wheelbase and more stability going up the hills then you have these mounting holes here in the front so you could you know extend the axle and still be able to attach it to something um, you have a lot of room in there especially if you use the stock motor which will just be sitting in here in this little spot here in the front everything else in there is empty inside the chassis you know there's these spots here on one side and, and on the other where the ESC actually fits in there I went ahead and mounted the ESC inside as you could tell it's on top of the stock battery. Uh, if you wanted to go with a bigger battery, you could mount 
something like this or maybe even bigger this is from my Gelande 2 it's an 850 milliamp hour battery it has the same you know footprint as the stock battery but it's thicker so you can use this and it will fit in the tray uh, that I made for this chassis so nothing you know it won't interfere with the servo or nothing as you can see it's got that bar right there which I brought it as high as possible so that the servo reaches all the way up there see this chassis there servo goes all the way up and then of course you have the articulation there it's not crashing into it um, this is one of those uh, Corona CS939 MG's these are really strong servos this is what I use with everything that I have and they've worked perfectly for me uh, I just had to put a little bit of a spacer here which is the piece that I cut off the the shocks, these are stock shocks, but I cut the reservoir, you know, reservoir <laughs> um, out and I used that to to mount this servo onto the stock um, plate for the servo. Yeah, I can print one and, you know, make it look better, but again, you know, I'm trying to keep everything stock so that if you have this, um, the stock vehicle, all you need is the chassis to make it work. Um, Obviously, you know, leaving that in there, you you know, you could use the stock servo. So this would work, you know, in place of that, and it will still do the function. Uh, the other thing, I designed this um, chassis to where it will have mounting points here, 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 and here. And there's another one back here if you really wanted it to. So you can see back there there's the same thing down here uh, if you really wanted to mount something from this side that way holding it on you may even you know if you wanted to drill a little bit and just put it both in there if you really wanted to stiff it, stiffen this up because um, you can mount the stock uh, rails to give it more you know stability so that's how they would go obviously if you use these as if you're really going to be beating on this guy um, it's not indestructible. It's really strong, especially if you get this version where it has the panels integrated. Um, but it's, it's not going to be indestructible. If you put a whole bunch of brass in there and everything, you drop it from like freaking <laughs> five feet, it, it's going to break. Come on, guys. Um, but if you put this, it'll give it a lot more rigidity and stability. So it won't break as easily. If you go that route, then you know you have to flip. Not only do you flip the, the links, but you also flip the, um, the rails. This is the way they go factory on the deadbolt. So you flip them around and that's how they attach to you know the chassis. So that way it doesn't stick out of the back. And what sticks out of the front is a very small part, which is covered by the servo anyways. So you can use the stock rails if you wanna make it um, really, really strong. Uh, this motor that I'm using is, um, I think it's 8,000 RPM for for um, 2S power, something like that. And uh, it has a 10 tooth pinion. And this is what it does as far as speed goes. So as you can see, it's pretty slow. Um, you can go slower if you put a bigger spur. This is the stock spur. Um, this is going to be the fastest speed. That's as fast as it'll go. That's top speed on this with this motor. So as you can see, it's pretty slow. So anybody looking for really slow, extremely torquey, um, you know, powerful motors, then that's what you would go with. Uh, go with. Uh, as a comparison, this is what you got. That's a 180, I mean a 180 motor compared to the stock, which is just a baby. So torque is, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different ballpark. So that's what you would use if you wanted to go this route that's the Fat Girl um, motor mount that I have on my website on Shapeways. 
that's what you will use to mount it. And then the, um, you will need pinions. Uh, you can get it in, um, what is it? Uh, AliExpress, I think is where I got them from. And I think Amazon has them as well. Uh, the 10 tooth, you could also get the 14 tooth. And uh, with this um, plate, you can go up to um, 20 tooth. If I'm not mistaken, I think I remember correctly. So you can get, you know, a lot of speed out of it if you really wanted to. Um, what else? What else? I don't know. Articulation with stock shocks. That's where you're at. Obviously, if uh, the more weight you put on them, the more articulation you get. Um, if you were to go with a uh, droop setup, that's as low as it'll go. So, you know, you still keep the, the look of the original. Um, you can go high, you can go low. Uh, another thing, when if you wanted to sit higher, what you can do, which is what I did here, uh, you take apart the stock shocks and the springs, just pull them apart. You know, don't pull them like super far. Just pull them apart a little bit to where you can feel that you're actually stretching them. Let them go. And what that's going to do is going to give it a new um, memory to the spring. Instead of being stock about this long, it'll make them about that long. Or a little bit more, it'll make them about that long. So you actually get more spring out of the stock springs by just stretching them out. So what it does, it brings the ride a little bit higher. Um, I wanted it to look, you know, the same front and back. So since I had already done this to the extended ones, I did it to the rear ones. And that's how you can get, you know, that's how I got it to be the same. But these rear springs are actually, have more spring to them than the stock would. You see how it pushes it up? So that's one thing you can do when you do your um, springs. Uh, when you extend your shocks, this shaft right here, all it is is a bolt. A bolt that comes from the uh, standard size, one tenth size servos. Uh, these bolts right here. If you get a standard one tenth servo, you take that bolt out. And uh, in some cases, the head is a little wide, so you just gotta grind that down a little bit so it fits inside the body of the shock. And just bolt it in. You'll get a longer shaft in there, so you have extended shocks. So you can cut the thread on them, you know, if you want to make it not as long. So you get to play with the length of the shocks. You know, a lot of people ask me about that when I keep telling them, you need extended shocks for your buggies, you know, so they actually function correctly. So that's that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, there's the other version of this chassis, which is just a tube chassis. Um, this one was one of the first prints, so it doesn't have all the um, mounting holes in it, like missing these and these. But um, this one right here is kind of like what you would get with the um, tube chassis, and then you also get the panels to apply them to this. Um, as you can see, it's got mounting holes here, 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 here. The top one's sitting come on this one because like I said this was not the finalized version and then you got mounting holes there and there for the panels uh, with this version the side panel comes all the way down and, and covers the, the holes this one right here they're exposed so so that you can actually mount you know everything onto this one because that panel is part of the chassis but on the on this one here when you get the panel it comes all the way down to here so you don't get to see all these bolts right here. You only get to see the bottom ones. Um, I don't know what else. I mean, pretty much this. That's what this is. Um, it is a little bit cheaper to go this route. Um, I think it's like seven fifty cheaper because I was able to save money on the prints themselves by actually incorporating that into this body. So that's one way to save a little bit of money. Uh, also, it's a little bit, um, it's more rigid, stronger with the body panels on this. Uh, it's less hardware that you're going to need, like the bolts. So you save on that as well. It's less trouble to try to put it all together. And uh, the only difference is that if you get this version and you're trying to get it with the color already incorporated into the print, then this may not be the one 
you want to get because you know you're gonna have to paint either the bars or the top if you want it to be different colors with this one you can get the chassis one color and then the panels a different color so you know you is your up you know your choice but like I said the only difference is like um seven dollars and fifty cents to get the other one with the side panels of course add to that whatever hardware you have to put in you know the bolts and um pretty much that's that's it I mean it looks all right <laughs> maybe um in the future I may do you know, like the micro shark with um, seats and all that stuff. I didn't do it for this one because um, you guys already know that my thing is um, bigger motors, motor plates, and all that stuff. And I was to make if I was to make the seats, I would have to make it for one thing or maybe two, because I don't I don't want to have like twenty different variations. One for the one thirty, one for the one eighty, one for the brushless, one for the stock. You know. I just don't want to do all that because it's just going to be a mess on the store. So I may or may not make seats for it. Um, we'll see about that. You know, it depends if people really, 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 really want them. And then I'll try to figure out. Maybe I'll do it for the stock motor and, you know, leave it at that or something. I don't know. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Um, if you like it, if you don't like it. Um, I'm up for, you know, I'm up for suggestions. Um, oh, snap. Tire, spare tire, uh, M3 bolt uh, will be able to screw into this hole, and you can put the tire in there. Um, I didn't have uh, another one of these stock tires to put in there, but there's one coming. Uh, one of the viewers uh, was kind enough to send me one of his spare tires, and I'm going to throw that in there, and um, it'll look really cool. Uh, but like I said, um, this was measured out to where it will fit the stock tire in there perfectly you don't even have to bolt it on if you don't want to it actually sits in there nice and tight um, these parts right here hold it in place but it has that option in there if you buy this version with um, all the panels the hood uh, the, the top actually has the adapter that you could put in there to hold onto the tire and then screw all the way into this you don't really need it if you have the bolt you could just put that and it'll hold the tire in place you know just don't put it super super tight it's gonna make the tire look weird and um, like I said I'm open for suggestions let me know what you guys think um, any changes that I should have made anything different uh, I don't know let me know hope you guys liked and uh, hope you enjoyed and hope to hear from you guys thanks for watching